This is lab eight, this is the collision lab. You will notice that I've already got the setup. It's fairly simple in this case. We have the ramp, we have a C-clamp securing it to the table or a table clamp. And then you've got down on the ground several sheets of paper. These sheets of paper you're going to make sure are taped into place so that there is no motion after you've placed them. This is going to make sure that all of your measurements are going to be good. You will notice that I have hanging here from the ramp a plumb bob. This is going to be used to mark our zero zero point. You're going to want to be fairly meticulous with this because if you do not have that portion of it right, you're not going to have any of the other measurements for this particular lab right. In order to make sure that you get the proper zero zero point, you're going to want this portion of the ramp to be directly off from the ramp. And you're going to want your plumb bob all the way to the ground. You may have to adjust some of the strings in order for this to happen. But you will go ahead and make a mark where the plumb bob is hanging. This is going to be your zero zero point. After you have done that, you are going to draw one axis here and another axis here. These should be at 90 degrees to each other and you should be able to judge that more or less with your eye. If you are uncertain, you may want to get a protractor and actually check that angle. While actually running this lab, the first thing you're going to do is move this post out of the way and run one ball and measure the distance from where the ball left the ramp at your zero zero point out to where it impacted. You'll want to do this several times and then for the collision portion of the lab, and I need a close up on this please, you're going to place the ball on the post at a slight offset from the ramp and you're going to want to make certain when the ball leaves the ramp that it impacts the second ball dead on. You may need to adjust the height of the ramp so that the balls meet head on by twisting it up or down. This may take a few moments, so have some patience with it. And you may need to actually cut off the string from your plumb bob. The reason for doing this is so that all of the energy from your ball is being imparted into the ball that is being collided with and that none of it is going in a dimension you do not want. After you have done that, you will once again allow the ball to drop and measure the components to both of the impact sites from your X and Y axis. For the final portion of the lab, you will go ahead and place this post directly in front of the ramp again, rather than offset to the side, and using one of these wooden balls with the tape on it, once again adjust the height of the post until the opening is directly in front of the ramp. Again, this may take a few moments, such that when the ball comes off the ramp, it goes directly into the opening of the wooden ball. This will be for your inelastic collision portion of the lab. If it is too high or too low, some of the energy will not be imparted into the collision the way that we want it to be. As you can see, I did not have it just right there. 
again, this may take a few moments to get just right. A key component when you release this ball is to make sure that the ball is simply being released and does not have any spin on it whatsoever. If you have spin on the ball, you will be imparting extra energy into the system that we don't want in the system. For the case of the single ball, you'll want to move this post over to the side out of the way and release the ball from the top pin all the way through. Once you have recorded all of the drops that you need for the single ball, you'll go ahead and have slightly offset from the center your second ball resting on the post and you will drop your ball such that when it goes down the ramp it will impact with the steel ball resting on the post. You may need to adjust the height of the ball resting on the post so that when the ball comes off the ramp they strike face on to each other rather than having the ball come off the ramp and down into or off the ramp and up into the bottom of the ball because then we will be imparting energy in the Z direction that we will not be able to take account in our two-dimensional XY dimension.